Quarantine is going really well right now here in Kwajalein and the Marshall Islands. Um, it has been very successful thus far as we have no active cases on the island um, through the process in Honolulu with the quarantine there and then followed with more quarantine here. It is extremely important to continue with this process so that we can completely prevent the virus from reaching here, so that we can continue with business as usual and just live life just like it was before COVID even existed. We have been able to continue to bring in um, employees and repatriate and returning residents so that they can be home and we can continue to work and support Garrison and the entire uh, Marshallese population. One, six, two. Two. One, two, three. Three records. This process, it entails people from all over. We are talking DFAC, which are providing the meals. We have our awesome lab that is working with us, you know, to run all these tests to make sure that we have all the results, that everybody is ready to be released into the community. Housing, because they are the ones assigning the quarantine quarters. We have the delivery date so they can have their own personal things brought to them as they want. The other staff nurses that have that go on rounds with me and help collect all those vital signs and keep just this running um, smoothly as possible. We are just one of very few countries that are left without any COVID. And it, without this whole team and this whole production and process, we would not be able to do that. So it is very rewarding to be part of something that says Marshall Islands are COVID free because of everything that we are doing on our end. Omicron is the honestly the bigger thing. As you can see back in the States right now, um, I've been telling people if you leave here, just expect to get it, right? doesn't matter if you're fully vaccinated with booster. Um, I think we've gotten numerous people that uh, have already left here and already have it and they're, they're delaying their uh, their time back. But uh, but I, I think in the, the long run, I think we're going to see the RMI. They're great partners and great friends and they understand the significant impacts that uh, uh, quarantine has had on not only their own uh, country's ability to um, get these critical infrastructure projects going. They understand the impact it's having on the garrison and we're working uh, together to try to mitigate those quarantine uh, restrictions to a point where we can actually get along with business, but still remain safe. So I think in the near term, I, we still have an agreement from the RMI that we will reduce um, Hawaii quarantine down to three days. It just may not happen in January like we agreed. It might be next month, but that's going to happen. We're still going to work forward uh, to reducing uh, quarantine in Kwajalein from the 14 days as it is now to something more scientifically informed, something around seven or 10 days. But that's a few months probably of, of, of dialogue with the RMI until we get to that point. Uh, but I definitely see that happening this year, uh, probably in the first half of this year. And then there's other uh, other considerations uh, as well as we continue to watch and monitor the situation. Right. So it's just really trying to make uh, decisions that's in the best interest of both the RMI and the garrison, as well as, and more importantly, to make sure we're keeping safe. Right, we're one of the few countries still in the world that is uh, that is COVID-free. The RMI wants to keep it that way. I want to keep it that way. Um, I think we can do that with less impacts uh, due to quarantine, but we're working, we're working through it. Um, I did find out last week, though, that the RMI did approve. Um, as of now, if you have uh, families traveling, if they have someone who is unable to get vaccinated, meaning they're four years or younger, they're still held to that 14 day quarantine. Uh, they've uh, rescinded that. So starting soon, families with as long as everyone else in the family is fully vaccinated, um, they'll be they'll be probably they'll be allowed to go through the seven day quarantine versus 14 days. Vectris, the incoming LogCap 5 contract holders and its subcontractors, held a town hall meeting at the Island Memorial Chapel. They covered transition details, company background, and employee benefits. Bill Cooler, Vectris LogCap 5 Program Management Office Vice President, said their main focus is on safety and a smooth transition. So safety is the number one mission priority. It will always be that. Uh, and we'll stress that very hard out here. Uh, that we're doing things the right way and, we're, and, and employees are not being hurt. So you'll see a big focus from us on, on environmental stewardship and safety and health. I don't see the apple cart being turned over here. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to take it over with minimal disruption or impact to any mission uh, here and certainly to the incumbent workforce. He also stressed that Vectris and its subcontractors want to keep people in their current positions and they will try their best to make it happen. There's a you know, near 100% chance that if you want to be employed for what we're gonna offer you to do the job,
and we hope that we got some competitive rates for you to do that, that you're going to have a job. Community questions dealt mostly with employee benefits and pay. If it's something where it's more favorable for people to take, you know, kind of slightly longer R&Rs, that's something that we might be able to do and might be able to accomplish because we want to make sure that our employees are happy because I know some employees, they just take a little bit of time off on island, maybe travel around the Marshall Islands so they don't have to leave out, but then they want, would like to take a longer one. And that's something we'd have to get approved with our leadership and within your department because it's going to be about staffing levels and staffing needs. The Vectris team said to make sure to create a profile on their career page if you're interested in maintaining your current position on the island. Vectris is currently available at Building 702 and they're happy to answer any questions or concerns. United States Army Garrison Quadrilla Tolls Marine Department. Before embarking on the passenger ferry to Ebi, please pay attention to this brief safety demonstration. Follow the walkway to the boarding gate and step aboard the vessel one at a time. Once you're on board, place any bags or items of luggage under your seat or on an empty bench beside you. Do not leave anything in the aisles or blocking passageways. The maximum capacity of the top deck is 23. Please obey crew instructions if the capacity has already been met. Passengers are not allowed past the metal chains or in the wheelhouse. Keep your arms inside the boat at all times. Don't sit or climb on the railings. Avoid standing in the stairwells. And always use the handrails when moving about the boat, especially in rougher weather. Smoking, drinking alcohol, and chewing betel nut are strictly prohibited. All rubbish should be disposed of in the bins. In case of an emergency, return to your seat and await crew instructions. If you discover a fire, or see, hear, or smell anything unusual, report it immediately to a crew member. Life jackets are located on the upper and lower decks. There are two sizes of life jackets, adult and child. When instructed to do so, slip the life jacket over your head, connect the strap around your waist, and tighten it at the front. Secure your own life jacket first before assisting children with theirs. In case of a man overboard situation, yell man overboard to alert the crew. Life rings are located on either side of the wheelhouse and on the lower level and should be thrown in the water as quickly as possible. There are four life floats located on the top deck which may be deployed in emergency. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the ride. Athletes of all ages gather to participate in the island-wide fun run. Participants ran three races, starting off with an easy half mile. Once everyone crossed the finish line, the second race began, a two mile run around the north side of the island.
Those who chose to run the same route again clocked in a four mile run. The fun run happens multiple times a year. The next event taking place in March. There's no need to sign up and the race is open to everyone. I love cooking, I always have. I love the experience of cooking for people. It's kind of my love language to make something and then present it to them maybe with things that they wouldn't have expected and to, to have the experience of sitting around with friends and sharing a meal with them. And we've always enjoyed trying new recipes, uh, which is especially unique here on Kwajalein because you get a recipe and you go to the grocery store and of course there are half the ingredients and it calls for pancetta and all we have is bacon and leeks and all we have is onions and I like having to make those kinds of shifts and figure out what'll still get that unique flavor with the ingredients that we have available. I would love for people to know how easy it really is. A lot of people just think that it's just too much work. It's just that much easier to make a box of macaroni and cheese and, and in reality what I'm going to make is exactly the same amount of time. You can cook and create a real meal with substantial ingredients that'll keep you full and help you be healthier. You can be really tired when you get home at the end of the day and just not know what to make and this is a really great fallback recipe when you're looking for something uh, that's both family friendly and healthy and a change from just your basic spaghetti. Hi, I'm Amber Bates. I live here on Kwajalein with my husband and four children and cooking is my love language.